can't even believe it. Anyway, but as president, I will break the grip of the Marxists on our justice system, and I will end Kamala's war. And it's her. It's her and a group of people. But it's a war on police, and together we will launch a war on violent crime in America. We have to. We, we are a laughing stock all over the world. You know, everyone's always talking about these terrible countries to live in, that regime and this or that. But those countries don't have crime like we do. Not even, not even close. Under Harris, the number of police resignations surged recently to over 60 percent. You've never had a number like that. And the first spending bill I signed, I will make a record investment in hiring, retention, and training for police officers. It's so important. It's powerful. It's so important. And you remember when I was uh, president, I gave you billions of dollars worth of military equipment that was unused. It was in the storage rooms. We talked about it. It was in the storage rooms. We talked about it. Remember that? A few years ago. And I made it available to the police. I took such heat. They said, it looks too powerful. It looks police-like. I said, isn't that a good thing? I mean, that's a good thing. But I gave you billions of dollars. It was sitting there drawing dust, billions and billions. It had storage houses all over the country, big storage houses of trucks, and a lot of it was defensive material, too, and defensive uh, Jeeps with armor plates all over them and a lot of great stuff. And I gave it all out to the police. Took a lot of heat. I'd never thought, I thought it would be a popular thing. It was with the police. But the crazies out there, they thought it was just a terrible thing. Uh, they thought it looked too powerful. And you got it, and we saved a lot of lives with that equipment, right? We saved a lot of lives, and, and we saved a lot of rent. We also saved a lot of rent that we didn't have to pay to all these storage places all over the country. We're going to get you uh, pay raises and reinforcements. We're going to get you reinforcements because you need them. And Harris repeatedly sponsored legislation to strip police officers immunity. You know, it's interesting. When you say the word Harris, nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about. Harris. Harris. They say, who is Harris? If you say to a person, what's our vice president's name? They don't know. Now, Kamala is an unusual name, but at least you know who we're talking about. When I say Harris, nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about. They say, who is that? So maybe we'll refer to him more as Kamala. It's a little friendlier, too, but it's hard to be friendly with somebody that wants to destroy our country. She's right now practicing. Do you know that? She's in Pennsylvania, and she's practicing for the debate. She's locked herself in a room. She's got a lot to learn. She's locked herself... <laughs> in a room, and they have one problem. You know what the problem is? They have MAGA people outside screaming, we love Trump, we love Trump, we love Trump, and they can't focus. Can you believe it? Just came over. They got MAGA people all over the place, and they're screaming, we love Trump, and she can't focus. That's okay. As president, I will sign legislation to strengthen protections for police officers, so important, and I will crack down on Marxist prosecutors like Philadelphia's Larry Krasner and L.A.'s George Gaston. No, it's unbelievable. These people, you did a murder. A guy just shot three people, and he's out on the streets in two hours. It's crazy. No bail. Cashless, they call it. No longer will corrupt DAs be allowed to engage in selective and race-based enforcement of the law. My administration will issue hundreds of millions of dollars in federal grants to reward cities and towns and return to proven crime-fighting methods, including stop-and-frisk and broken windows policing. We did that with Rudy Giuliani. It was so successful. You know, New York, before Giuliani, New York, New York was at the edge. It was a hopeless situation. And Rudy came in, and he, uh, he did the stop-and-frisk thing. And he did at numbers that were moderate, good. You can't go crazy. But he, they knew what they were doing. And they did the windows. And the window sounds like a ridiculous idea. But when they had all these burned out places, they made them look livable. And uh, we went from a, a crime-ridden city to the safest big city anywhere in the world. You know, that's a big, that's a big accomplishment. He really he doesn't get the credit he deserves, I will tell you that. 
but we'll get the homeless and the dangerously deranged, of which we have many off of our streets. And many are coming in because I said they're coming in from the mental institutions all over the world. And we'll get them the help they need. It's a very hard thing to get the help they need. And many of these people are never going to make a comeback. You know that. They can't make a comeback. It's horrible. It's a horrible thing. But we'll make our towns and cities safe again. We'll make them clean and beautiful once again. And we'll have places that you live in the manner to which you're supposed to be living. Because people are living in hell right now. Like that. And working with local law enforcement, we will launch a federal task force to dismantle the gangs, the street crews, and the criminal networks that are ravaging our towns. This will include a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence for anyone guilty of human smuggling, a guaranteed life sentence for any guilty child trafficking, and the death penalty for drug dealers and anyone guilty of child or woman sex trafficking, which they are doing at numbers which are massive. And we're also calling for a strong death penalty for anyone who kills a police officer. Right? Get that done. Get that done. We'll get it done.